What's going on guys? Welcome back to another G35 video. Now in today's video I'm going to show you hopefully how to fix your transmission. Now I'm working on Brian's G35 coupe. If you guys don't know who Brian is I've done a few videos with him on his car. Uh, so go ahead and click above so that you guys can catch up. Uh, so what's going on with his um, 05 G35 coupe is he has something going on with the transmission. So he does have a automatic transmission and it has a code P1767. Now these vehicles actually are pretty good as far as the transmission goes. But I've been starting to notice that as these vehicles are getting older, they start developing these transmission codes. Now these transmission codes have to do with the valve body and the solenoids. I'm not going to get too into detail of you know what is going on, but basically what is happening is either you have a bad transmission or you have a bad solenoid or a bad connection so i'm hoping that he has a bad connection in the valve body that's causing him to get this p1767 which is one of the solenoid sensors so um to fix this you guys can try to remove the valve body off the transmission and inspect any issues that it might have um, there is a video out there showing you guys how to fix a P1757, which I believe this code that I have on his car is very similar. I think it's the sensor right next door to it that has the issue. So like I said, fixing this issue involves pretty much jacking up the vehicle, draining the transmission and removing the valve body and inspecting the sensors, the solenoids and the uh, valve body TCM, the transmission control module which is what controls the transmission, right? So I'm gonna try to fix his car in today's video. If I can't fix it, he's gonna need a new transmission and uh, I'm just gonna try to save him some money by hopefully fixing it. Some of the symptoms that Brian was experiencing with his vehicle is that at random times when you're stopped at a stoplight, the vehicle would not go forward when you would step on the gas pedal. The vehicle acted like if it was in neutral. Um, so that's kind of dangerous if you think about it, if you can't accelerate. Uh, so I'm hoping that I can maybe fix it for him. So I have the G35 in the air. I'm going to go underneath, uh, drain the transmission. I'm going to try to save as much of that fluid as I can because um, he just changed it. So I'm going to try to put that back in. Um, I believe the drain plug is a 17 millimeter. I can't remember off the top of my head if it's a 17 or a 19, but I think it's a 17. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The drain plug is actually a 19 millimeter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that off. So we are letting the transmission drain here on the pan. Um, this is going to be a messy job if I haven't said so already. Um, you're not going to get every drop on your drip pan here. Uh, so I am using a little cardboard on the bottom so that if there's anything that it misses, you know, it won't stay in the garage. So I am going to start working my way at removing all the 10 millimeter fasteners that are holding down this transmission pan onto the transmission. So what I did here is I pretty much removed all the fasteners on the left side of the pan here and I left the right side kind of loosen up here. I didn't remove them all the way but I did back them out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do here is just go in here with the little pry tool and then the pan's going to kind of tilt to the side and all the remaining fluid in the pan should go into the drip pan that I have here. All right guys, so once you remove the pan, this is how it's gonna look. So right here we have the transmission uh, filter. Normally people don't really change this and normally you don't have an issue with this filter, but if you're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the valve body, it'll be a good time to replace this now. Um, so what we're here for is the transmission valve body, which is pretty much all this right here. 
Now, in order for us to remove this valve body, there is some fasteners that we need to remove. I'm going to throw a picture up that is kind of highlighting all the fasteners that you need to remove. Um, you also need to disconnect the connection that goes to the valve body. Uh, once you remove the valve body, the connection is going to be kind of on the back. So once we get to that point, I'll show you guys how to remove it. It's fairly simple. Uh, but at this point, what I'm going to do is, like I said, remove this valve body. You are going to uh, have more transmission fluid behind here. So be prepared to catch that. Um, from what I'm seeing here, um, there's nothing really alarming. There's not any metal shavings in the pan. So I'm hoping that we have a loose solenoid connection um, so that we can fix this. All right, so we pretty much have all the fasteners uh, loose. Uh, I took everything out except one. Uh, I'm letting the valve body drain a little bit more. As you guys can see, you are going to get about two more quarts when you loosen up all the bolts. So I have a pan here ready catching all the, all the oil here. Once it stops uh, leaking, I'm going to go ahead and remove this valve body and disconnect it from the transmission. So as you can see, I have the valve body on the ground here. I couldn't really record and show you how to disconnect the valve body from the transmission because this guy is a little heavy and as you guys can see, it's kind of slippery. But basically what you have to do is disconnect this little green connector from the top right over there. Um, so you hold the valve body with one hand and you sneak up there and just push down on this tab and pull out. You also want to disconnect this guy over here, basically the same thing. So this guy also has a little green tab on the side. If the camera focuses, it's a little green tab on the side and that one connects on this side as well. All right, so right here we have the valve body assembly. Uh, these are the solenoids. Uh, normally these guys from what I've read they don't really go out and when they do go out that means you probably have a bigger issue because they're clogged from metal debris. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of these solenoids put them to the side in order and then I'm going to go ahead and start unbolting the TCM which is this black thing right here. Now uh, it's important that when you guys are removing these things you put them in order. The fasteners that are holding things down here are a five millimeter hex and I believe a 10 right over here. I think we also need to disconnect this guy right here. And uh, I think these guys right here as well. So we'll go ahead and disconnect these connections and start working my way at removing the TCM. All right, so I have the TCM pretty much out here. What I need to do now is just work my way around it and unclip the clips that hold this back piece on. Uh, once we remove that, it's gonna give us access to the connections and I'm gonna inspect it to see if there's any broken pieces. Um, important thing to note is that some of these fasteners are longer than others, so make sure that when you guys are removing them, uh, to put them in a safe spot so that you don't mess up when you are installing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unclip the back cover here and uh, see if there's any broken connections. I did remove the back cover to the TCM and um, I did inspect it thoroughly to see if you know there is any broken metal connectors here however I did not find anything wrong with this by looking at it obviously you would probably have to diagnose this further uh, to see what the issue is it's possible that it can be the solenoids because they are pretty dirty as you can see here they're pretty dirty so maybe switching these guys out wouldn't be a bad idea. But at this point, I mean, it's probably better to just get a whole different transmission and avoid having that issue altogether. So, like I said, I was hoping to find one of these connectors here in the bottom, like, broken or something, but everything looks solid to me. All right, so what I ended up doing is putting the valve body pretty much back together. 
The only thing that I did was I switched the solenoid that has the code to the other side. So this solenoid right here, which I believe it's the direct clutch solenoid, I'm not exactly sure, but this solenoid and this solenoid appear to be the same. They had the same number on, on the back of the solenoid. Uh, so these guys should be the same. I believe these two are the same as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just swap these guys over. If the code goes over to this side, then we know we have a bad solenoid. The next morning. All right guys, so I did some work off camera. Um, I have two spare transmissions from a automatic G35. This transmission is in much better shape than the one that Brian has in, and you guys can clearly see by just the surface of these solenoids that they're much cleaner. So in theory, these are in much better shape than the one that he has. So these solenoids, I believe they're all the same that come on that car. The only difference is this guy right here. I believe the resistance on this solenoid, the low cost solenoid is different. So I can't swap that out obviously, but I can swap out the ones that I think have issues, which is the high and low reverse solenoid and the direct clutch solenoid. So. I am gonna go ahead and swap these guys over. I might just swap them all over just because this transmission, I know that it was good because I drove the vehicle. So I might just, you know, swap out all these solenoids and just be done with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, a lot of you guys are probably gonna be asking yourself, why don't I just swap out the whole transmission? There's an issue with that. This transmission is in early style. So it does not technically work with his vehicle. His is a 2005 and he has an internal TCM, which you guys can see that this looks different from the one that I pulled off of his car. So the TCM on this transmission is in the cabin of the uh, interior. So this technically won't be compatible, but the sensors, solenoids should be compatible besides this guy right here. So I am gonna remove these guys. I'm gonna pull his car in again and uh, pretty much do what I did yesterday. Soon after. What I did to the G35 did not work. The car does drive a lot better with those solenoids that I put in, but the issue still remains that when you're like at fourth gear going on to fifth, the vehicle shakes a lot. This is actually something new that Brian was not experiencing before. Um, so we did get rid of the initial complaint, which was the vehicle not taking off when you're at a stoplight. Um, the vehicle would act like if you're in neutral. Um, so we completely got rid of that. So I'm super excited about that. So that got me thinking, what else could be wrong? So this right here is the transmission mount. As you guys can see, it's pretty broken. Now, I don't know if this alone will cause that issue, but it's a good start to figuring out what is going on. Technically, there's a decent amount of play there, and if this is wobbling around, that could cause it to vibrate at high speeds. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this, obviously, put something else on, and see if the vibration goes away. All right, guys, so um, I put everything back together. The transmission mount did make a difference. However, the issue still continues. So at this point, I think it's best for him to just drive the car like that until the transmission completely dies. Um, I don't think it's worth it at this point to replace the transmission since the vehicle still technically drives and, and it's only fourth gear that has an issue. So I would still drive it um, at least until it gives out on him at that point. It's just better to just replace the whole transmission. So I wasn't able to completely fix the issue with it, but I hope that this video um, give you guys some insight on what could be going on with your vehicle. Um, please comment down below if you have figured out a solution to this problem so others can also uh, benefit from that information. If you guys did like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace out.